Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you how I turn this into this. The reason that I began digging the pond in the first place was because I was going to purchase a stock tank, one of those really big 300 gallon ones, and then just dig that and put it in the ground. But somewhere along the way, I got carried away and decided to just buy a liner and make it that way. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. It's probably gonna be a bit of an all day project. It's nine o'clock in the morning and I got time to kill. All right, folks, so normally your first step is to measure out and kind of mark the area that you're going to want to dig for your little pond. However, I have these ever so stupid, annoying, nice and prickly rose bushes, which I have been confirmed by my parents do not matter and they do not like them. So we're probably just gonna take out this one for now. And if it's real easy, I'll just go ahead and pop out the others, but this way I can clear a nice big area for my turtle pond. It may be early, but we know that the boys and bean are up. All right, so luckily this bush was pretty easy to topple. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the others. Now I can go ahead and measure the exact, well, the rough area that it's gonna take up and then size it to fit when I actually get the tub. Okay, so my thought process here is that I'm actually going to cut into the yard at this little angle. And that's for a few reasons. Number one, as I'm measuring it out, if I were to try to fit it perfectly in this area here, I'm really not going to be able to give myself enough room to work back here, you know, because there's still a hose here. And just in case I need to do any weeding or maintenance, I will have to get back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this grass cleared out. All right, so I've just about got all of that grass out. I'm gonna be taking the dirt, loading it into this little wheelbarrow, taking it down into those woods and just kind of dumping them. So let me get to it. My next step is now to go ahead and kind of make the perimeter, which is gonna be from, I'm gonna remeasure, should be down from up there, down to here, up to back there, right parallel with, with that, or right on par with that, down to there and there. Make a big kind of cube or a rectangle. Yeah, geometry. Okay, everyone, so we just about have this fun little thing lined out. Another quick tip is that if you have landscaping fabric, pull that out because you're better off spending the extra time weeding or just pulling out weeds or whatever. Also, I think weeds look more natural in it, but if you don't like weeds, um, pull out your landscape fabric because I'm going to try and make this where my turtles can climb out and like go and wander, except I'm gonna build a border and put some uh, netting. But if they try to go and lay eggs, females can't, you know, dig and cut and rip that. So they will inevitably not lay the eggs or have a very hard time or lay them in a shallow spot. So pull up that landscape fabric. Hello, beef. Watch what happens when we come on out. He dives. Oop. That's a little survival instinct thing, thing that uh, turtles do in case people come. Look, when the light hits, you can see straight down to the bottom. Isn't that neat? And to think that this water was pea soup. Hey, baby fish. I didn't know that any were still in here. That's neat. Oh, there's a lot. Oh, yay. Welcome to the world, friends. <gasps> there's a ton of baby fish. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited. Yay, beef. Don't eat them. Don't eat them, dummy. Ooh. All right, back to the pond. Okay, so now I went ahead and leveled it out just because I like the way that it looks, make things a little bit neater, and it should make it easier to dig if it is all one level. So now I just need to get this thing out. 
this whole big chunk. Wish me luck. All right, so I'm just getting started digging out this middle section, and I wanted to give you guys a tip. So when you dig out your perimeter, right, you're left with this middle block. But because you dug out one shovel space around, it gives you a very, very good vantage point to go ahead and stick your shovel down. And now watch this, you can get this entire chunk, this whole thing, on one shovel load. Now I need to use two hands, but you see, this is all one piece. So it's very, e it's gonna be very easy. I already chipped away that back part there, and this little middle section, I'm gonna have done within the hour. After finishing the first layer, I'm beginning to get started on the second layer, and I've hit this stuff, which is not only excessively heavy, but it doesn't really break very well. So we are in the absolute heat of the day. So I'm gonna go inside, eat lunch, let the sun kind of cool down a little bit because it's one o'clock, this is prime time for it to get really toasty. And uh, I'm gonna eat lunch, maybe kill an hour or two, then come back and, and get at it. Hey folks, so here I am, it's about, I don't know, three o'clock. I took a good two hour break during the heat of the day. And so as you can see, I've been uh, kind of keeping busy getting this done. Uh, so far it looks pretty good. I just, after this first, um, maybe foot, foot and a half, probably not even foot and a half, probably just a foot down. I hit very, very rough clay. Let me get you guys down in here. You can see this really weird multicolored orange, kind of blue, sometimes green clay. So I'm going through and just carving out kind of this bottom area. And yeah, I'm just updating you guys on this, on my progress. I'm gonna keep digging. And next time I kind of come back on here, I should be done. I should kind of have this cleared out. I need to expand uh, the walls a little bit and I should pretty much be finished. Hey everyone, so this is now the end of day one of my little turtle project. I got a lot done, I was really happy. And basically what happened was about a foot down, the soil was very soft, kind of like sand. Easy to dig, but not good for, for structuring because you know, it's sand, it kind of falls down very easily. Then the next foot or so was clay, pure clay, and that was really, really tough to get through, but I did it uh, with a pickaxe in order to break it into chunks and then pick it up and toss it in my wheelbarrow and take it into the forest. And then underneath that was more sand, but more compact kind of wet sand, and it was much easier to dig. I could probably go down with that stuff another two feet if I wanted easy, if that's all that there is and there's not another clay layer. But I don't need to go any deeper, at least for now. Let me show you guys what I have done. Okay, so here it is. Now I know that the first layer walls kind of look crappy, but that's not really an issue because I'm gonna be backfilling with some light soil that I have over there. Uh, it's all piled up right there. Kind of backfilling with light soil just for good drainage and to kind of cover it up so the turtles when they climb out they don't fall down into a hole or something and i put that piece of wood there in order to build up some dirt over there because it started getting uh, a little bit too loose it was more like a slope than a real step so you come down here now this is a-okay to step on simply because this clay is just so hard and compact and good for structure uh, and holding its shape. As you can see, you can see where I went with the flat shovel and just carved it all out. That's pretty much what I did down here. So this was day one. I would say that was some good progress that I got done. See over here, this little wooden thing. See this I don't like. I'm gonna have to clean up this edge kind of, um, do a little bit more really just cleaning. So let me hop out of here. Got some big twigs. Oh, I also have to 
get my lobbers and like cut that root. There's another root over there. But um, I'll just do that tomorrow when I'm fitting everything in. And um, hopefully tomorrow I, I end up doing that. It's about seven feet by seven feet roughly. Um, the interior is, I wanna say about 45 inches. All right, everyone, day two, and it's been decided. I'm just gonna do a liner. And so, because I'm going to do a liner, I can do whatever I want here. And um, this is about six feet by seven feet, actually seven feet this way. I'm going to build a wooden box around this, put wire on top, and hopefully, if I'm smart enough and I figure it out, um, make a wooden hatch. So that way the whole wire frame can kind of come up in case I need to access this. So I'm gonna go ahead and because shelves are really only used for, kind of for, for koi pretty much or for goldfish to kind of have a shallow area or if you wanna put plants, I'm gonna knock out this wall in the process of knocking out this wall and I'm gonna knock out this wall and have this back area, just have the shelf over here just in case they need a little shallow area to kind of fiddle around on or do whatever you know the terrapins want to do so i will be back when this wall is gone and maybe when these two are gone as well okay folks so i'm out here just kind of touching up the walls as you can see i obliterated that wall i might do that to the other two i need to make this ledge more shallow and i'm now going around and digging maybe a one foot section out i'm going to do that all the way around and that's in order to put my liner down, and then I'm either gonna put the dirt back on top or I'm going to use some type of rock and gravel. And that's just gonna hide the liner, hold it down, and make it look nice. Okay, so I've almost got this shelf out, but I just wanna show you folks that when you're dealing with clay, it's really more mining than digging. And I say that because digging, you just put the shovel in, you take the dirt out. But when you're working with clay, this is all one chunk that I just brought out. This is a good maybe eight inches by like a foot. This is a very massive piece. And here's one from earlier that I took out. It, it kind of comes out in chunks. You're really like carving kind of this, this whole design once you hit clay. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it holds the structure of the pond. See, this is really not going anywhere compared to up here. It's very loose. But the bad thing is that it's really hard to dig, but you can get chunks like this and uh, pull them out. We are now deciding to add cinder block all the way around. And then we're gonna take the liner and put it up and over. And I got 45 mil, so these corners don't really matter. And we're gonna backfill with soil, put the dirt in and uh, make these walls nice and steep and uh, make it nice and structurally sound. Okay, so here's another little update. I went ahead and got these cinder blocks all leveled out. I have my level right there. I got them all leveled out and they are all structurally sound now. They pretty much are not going anywhere. Now, let me quickly explain the reason why I did some things. Let me just kinda... So, let's see. I cut the dirt back to where the bricks were where it was clay and I knew that it would be able to support a full cinder block. Now, there are areas such as this corner where I did not, and that's just because I really want to keep the integrity of this block and it's just kind of worth it sticking out in the pond for, for me personally. Um, some other things I did. So over here, this is what I call my problem area. And that's simply because this is so sandy as you can see, it's actually got a slant right here, but I have just enough clay at the bottom to really hold it. And I have this big chunk right here holding those two blocks back. And so I'm actually not going to dig this out because normally I, I dug back to make it semi flush with the blocks, but I did not do that over here because it needs to hold all of this and the blocks. And if I started chiseling, the whole thing would kind of avalanche down and I don't want that to happen. So now I have to backfill and I will get the liner in. All right, so I now have all the cinder blocks filled with dirt 
And now what I'm going to do is either tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to lay the underlayment and then lay the liner and tuck it back behind these cinder blocks and then fill in with dirt. Now normally you would pretty much be doing this same thing except over the liner. Rather than cinder blocks you would use regular decorative rock. However, I'm using this more for an efficient purpose uh, for turtle pond rather than, you know, a kind of a super decorative fancy pond. Okay, so now I have this little perimeter border fence all put in, and now I am going to backfill kind of the front and the back and get this straightened out. Then maybe I'll fill it. Do tomorrow. Um, as you can see, I pretty much got that down to here done. I need to fill in a little more here. Um, back there is pretty good, that corner's solid, and then I need to get the whole front. But so far, this is going pretty well. This is just some lattice that I got from Lowe's. Cut it in half, got some stakes, cut those. And uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be putting, uh, I'm gonna finish back filling, and then I'm going to fill it with water and put a whole net over top the entire thing. So we are now on day, I believe, four or five, and so all around the pond, what I'm doing is I'm getting the base layer of dirt in. And what I pretty much mean is I'm filling in these cracks and then pushing it down because I want to get a very strong layer down of this dirt. So that way the turtles can't really, you know, fall through and kind of get stuck back there. They would have to really dig themselves into one of these corners in order to get stuck. And uh, then rinse this all down, clean it up and get it filled. So I'm going to get the hose, get some of the dirt off of it, toss it in like this. Let's get rolling. Hooray! So I have to get down there and kind of work out the wrinkles and uh, make sure that it flattens out nicely. Slowly but surely it's filling up. We're almost up to the rim. Slow and steady but we're getting there. We're getting really, really close. Just a couple more inches. That's maybe five inches left. And then we are done. Why use white picket fence when you can use wood? And it looks all natural. So we're just going in putting stumps of wood all the way down up to the house and then going to put netting kind of on the inside to stop these little suckers from getting out. Hello. All right, so this fence is all done and finished. These are about three or four inches into the ground and they're all pretty stable. This goes all the way around. And I have a little bit more work to do tomorrow, probably putting a net over top of this. I tried to use this net, but it really did not work well. There's so much extra netting that it's very difficult, but I'm gonna just try to tackle that issue tomorrow. And I may be putting a net kind of on the inside against uh, the entire wall, just to make sure that they can't get out. Um, Two of the turtles already came up and tried to walk the perimeter and get up, and uh, they could not. So that's good. That's good news for me, knowing that they cannot, in fact, climb out. At least, not now. And so, I'm just going to kind of take some netting and put it on temporarily. But yeah, I had uh, some trees cut, and so we took these posts and pieces of wood and laid them all out, just like this.
Hey everyone, so unfortunately I had to move into my college dorm so I don't really have any more pictures or footage from after that point. But the pond is basically complete. There's just a few more things that I would like to do with it to make it look better and a little more natural. But for right now, it's going to serve its purpose and those three terrapins are going to be very happy in their pond. That's going to be a pond for any terrapins that I get here. I can now just send home and have my parents feed them and kind of take care of them because I made sure to make it very low maintenance. So thank you all for watching. If you want to see more of what I'm doing here, please hit the little subscribe button and the bell notification thing so you don't miss any of my videos. And I'll see you all in the next video.